Look, it's real simple. This is a Kai Force. I'm going to show you how to use it with an audio interface so we can track a lot of sources at the same time. Um, how you can use it like a mixer to route signals in and then out to external effects and back in. And so you can check out what the latency is like. Because this may be something that you want to do. I find it very helpful when I want to track a band or if I need to uh, track a lot of sources at one time. It just opens up some things you can do with it. So here's a little tune that we're going to uh, compose here. Especially for this occasion. So, so, so some things I want you to pay attention to with all of this. Are, what is the latency like? You know, Is there any latency? Are we getting clicks and pops? Is there glitches? You know, how does this really work? You know, so I'm going to do uh, is just go through here and show you how like this very simple tune. You know, in real time, that's uh, bringing this reverb unit in here. And then you can bring in like this uh, delay over here. And this is all happening in real time. Basically what's going on here is we have a MIDI channel, or actually three MIDI channels here sending MIDI out to those devices over here in the, to my left. Uh, in the case of the piano module and the drum machine, their audio is coming back into the force, being, being routed back out through an external effects send into the effects and then back into force. So in the case of that, you're hearing some of these signals twice. So that should really answer some questions for you as to whether or not this is latent audio or you know, what are what can I accomplish with this so what I'm gonna do is uh, just start from scratch rebuild this entire project and walk you through what you need to do to make this happen um, if you're interested in the pieces of equipment that I use to make this video uh, check in the description or the links there should be, I imagine, probably up here somewhere. Um, there will be some links to other videos that explain what these things are. And you can see why I chose to use them for this video. All right. So we're going to get started and rebuild all this. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we'll do a new project. If you find this interesting, uh, you know, hit that bell, like, share, and subscribe. So we're going to start with an empty project. And we have a plug-in and an audio track. Okay, some things we need to make sure that you have installed before you do this. Um, on preferences here, you must have 3.1.1 if or higher. I'm using 3.1.2. So you must have that installed on your force before you can use an external audio interface in this way. Now, um, the interface I'm using is the Tascam and it's got 16 inputs and eight outputs. When you use an external audio interface with force, it takes over the audio input and output duties. In this case, it also adds one additional um, MIDI in and out port, but we're not using the using those in this one, uh, this video, this case. Um, so this drum machine here, I have um, it's got twelve individual outputs which are routed to the first twelve inputs. The piano module here is uh, connected to inputs thirteen, fourteen, and these are fifteen and sixteen respectively. Delay and reverb are 15, 16. The outputs of the interface 
in this case force, the main outputs are going into a mixer right along with um, this microphone that I'm using for narration. And that is connected directly to the camera. Okay, so now to get started doing this, we're going to leave in the plug-in track. We'll go ahead and configure that as, uh, we'll make it a bass, just because we don't have one in this setup. Great, that sounds like a bass. Especially if we uh, pull it, pull it down an octave. Great. Okay. Now, to monitor all of these external inputs, we need to use force like it's a mixer. In this case, we have 16 channels, uh, 16 inputs that can make up eight stereo channels, which is the maximum. So that's how we're going to set this up. Now. We want to take our audio track. We want to turn our monitor on. In this case, I'm going to use merge. This way, it, this way, incoming signals are merged with clips if there are any in the channel. Now, since um, by default, it should be on one and two, we should have the first two channels of the drum machine. Absolutely, perfect. Well, not quite, right? those two signals are left and right, which is what you'd expect in a stereo input and stereo channel. But what do we do if we want these to be dead center? Well, what we're gonna employ here is a modulation plugin called Stereo Width. And we're just gonna drag that width down to zero and leaves us with this. Now, both the snare and the kick are dead center instead of left and right, respectively. That's exactly what we want to do. Now, if we have a stereo source, in this case, the 1314, we won't use that plug-in there because we want that to be left and right. So to make this super easy for ourselves, uh, we'll just go ahead and copy this track right here by holding uh, copy and we'll Hit two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one more. Copy it to, that is all of our eight audio tracks in one plugin track. Now, I believe on 1314, we don't want this plugin, so we'll just remove it. So now that we've copied all of our channels, all we need to do is change our input assignments to match and we will have everything that we need. And just like that, there's our first 12, everything's all in mono. And if we make a MIDI track, actually we'll make three, we'll make two of those. We'll make one for our piano module, which is connected to force and put number one, just like that. And we'll make these two go to our drum machine which is on channel 10. Perfect. Now, our two effects units are on 15, 16, right here. And how do we get, how do we get a signal to those? Well, we use our sins, right? Where our effects are our plug-in slots, we're going to use our sins. And in this case, one and two are hardwired. In a, not hardwired, but in a new project, one and two are usually set up to be a delay 
and, and a reverb. Reverb and delay on one and two. If you'll notice, your input and output is set to outputs one and two. So what that means is by routing any channel to an effect return, it goes through the effects in this slot and then comes out one and two, which in this case would be our monitors that we're listening to in the control room, right? So we're gonna change that because we wanna make this destination here be out and then through one of our boxes over here. So we're gonna change we're gonna, and since it's mono, we're not gonna use a stereo feed. We're going to use out three, and we're gonna change this one to out four, because this is where I have those two connected. Now what that lets us do is come back to, say, this channel here. Here's our delay, here's our reverb. Just as, just as if it were a digital or an analog board of some type. Super easy, right? So again, all we're doing here is we took each channel, we're routing in two instruments per track, per audio track, and then using our stereo width plugin to make them sound mono. Now you might be wondering, if we record this way, does it, does it record them in one mono track, or does it record them in a stereo track? This plugin is post tape, if you will. So what that means is, we're only monitoring this in mono. We're only monitoring it through the plugin this way. It's recorded in a normal stereo file, which means this would be on the left and this would be on the right. Just if how we see it here, if we um, defeat our plugin, check the meter for a second, right? This is going to record this way. But when we engage the plug-in, we get mono. At this point, we're pretty much ready to record something, right? 